Hey everybody, Darren here, and I'm going to be starting up a Unity 3D Unit tutorial series uh, as requested by the community. So if you want to get involved in some of the content that we create, then make sure that you're voting for our polls and just getting involved in the comment section on our community page. Uh, it goes a long way when, even though a poll seems to be leaning in one direction, we have several other people uh, trying to make their voice heard a little bit more, or some of our Patreons voting on our Patreon page uh, saying that they want something else. So uh, any any effort to get the content that you want out onto our channel uh, goes a long way. Now I don't know exactly where this tutorial series is going to be headed, but uh, leave a comment down below this video and uh, the, the idea with the most likes will actually go ahead and take that video idea and uh, implement that into the networking series. So if you have an idea for a project, maybe it's a messenger app, or maybe it's a first person shooter, which obviously is going to take a little bit more time, uh, then just leave those ideas down below. And uh, yeah, we're going to try to work to create that tutorial for you. Uh, networking is a really huge topic, so it's not something that I'm going to try to cover in one video. Uh, but we're going to sort of break the ice a little bit. And I know some of this has been done before uh, you can find some of the stuff that we're going to be doing in this video all over the internet uh, but I would like to start it off here since this will be a series and uh, the reason I want to do that is just so we have a series that has from start to end all of the networking topics that you need to know for UNET. Okay so I'm going to shut up a little bit and just talk about exactly what we're going to be doing. Uh, here I have an empty Unity project and uh, I have a scene called Sample Scene. So I'm just going to change this to Offline. Uh, with Unity UNet, you're going to have an offline scene and an online scene minimally. Uh, and and what that is, what that is, is just when the client or server or host is offline, it'll go to that scene, and uh, when they're online, it'll go to the online scene. Uh, the first thing we want to do here is just make sure that we're adding these scenes to our build settings. So I'll add all the open scenes there. And then in my offline scene, I want to create the network manager. So I'm going to go ahead and create an empty game object. And I'll call this my network manager. And then I'll add the component. So add component network manager. And I'll add the HUD actually, because the HUD gives us some buttons that allow us to connect. Uh, to the server or to other clients. Okay, and most of these settings are pretty straightforward and uh, we can actually leave them alone. We have network info here. Um, by default in this tutorial, we will be connecting to localhost. Localhost is like simulated internet. It's definitely not the same, but the concepts are the same. So if you can connect to localhost, then generally speaking, you can use the same code to connect to somebody over the internet. Um, so, and here we have the network address, the port, then we have uh, the matchmaker host. So if we actually want to use matchmaker to connect to a specific server with a spe uh, specific name, then uh, we would be going through this matchmaker host URI. Okay, and you know some of this we're gonna be getting into later in the series, I'm sure. Uh, but for now we're keeping it simple so let's just drag our offline scene there and our online scene into here and that's pretty much all we need to do with that now if we just run this and uh, we should be in the offline scene I think so if we just run this then we'll actually see some GUI elements showing up okay and here are the GUI elements and uh, it's pretty straightforward really. I mean if I want to be the host I would click host if I want to be the client I would choose client if I want to enable matchmaker Then I would just click enable matchmaker and then I could choose the name that I want to either search for or create Okay, but we're not going to be dealing with matchmaker in this series Okay, now minimally speaking I would say I want to have both of my scenes tell me which scene I'm in so I'm going to uh, just really quickly, I'm going to remove this scene from my hierarchy. I want to create a UI element and uh, I'm going to try to make it look decent at least. So I'll create a background. I'll expand that holding alt and shift like that. Call it BG and then I'll just change the color 
of my background. And then I'll add a text component that just tells me basically whether I'm online or offline. So we're in the offline scene, so this will be offline. And uh, just for the sake of saving time, I'm going to delete my online scene and duplicate my offline. And then that way I'll have the UI elements already in my online scene. And it looks like those didn't copy over for, for whatever reason. So I'll go back to my offline scene. Try that again, duplicate, and then go to my offline. Okay, now I'm going to rename this to online. And I'll remove the network manager from the online scene because we won't need it there. The network manager is persistent, so it should carry over. Um, and I'm just going to change this text to say online. Okay, and I'll save that scene. And from here, I should be able to just build out the project and, uh, and use the GUI to connect either as host or as client. So let's go ahead and build out this project. I'm going to build. Oh, and first I need to remember to add my new online scene. So because I deleted that, so I'll add the open scene, I'll remove that. And then for my network manager, I'll have to make sure I have both of those scenes in there again. There we go. Uh, and now I can go ahead and build this. So I'll call this uh, networker. And when building for standalone, it wants to have a folder to actually drop into. Um, so I'll just call this my PC build. Okay, now these assets are going to be available on GitHub. Uh, I'll go ahead and share the link in the description, and uh, I'll probably pen the comments since some people have a little bit of trouble finding those links. Uh, and we can go ahead and just share this project, and you guys can fork it, or you can just pull it, and uh, sort of share the code, and you know submit. You can submit pushes to us, and you know if the pushes are good, then we'll accept them. And uh, that's just a really good way to share code with the community. So it looks like the PC build was created. I'll go ahead and open that up. And uh, I'll make this windowed because I actually want to have two of these windows up. And I'll probably make this smaller just so we can look at both of them at the same time. So I'll just do the smallest option here. And then I'll open up another one simulating the client. So here, uh, ideally, we'd have either a server and a host or a server server client relationship or a host client relationship uh, moving forward just know that a host is a server and a client at the same time whereas a server is just a server um, so one of these has to be a host if I choose client on both of them it's going to say I'm trying to connect and uh, that's pretty much as far as we're going to get however if I cancel one of them and I choose host then I'll allow access uh, for that application. And both of those went online. Now, notice that whenever I turned off the host, we went back to offline. And I'll do that again. So if we just repeat the process, if we have two clients trying to connect to an empty host or empty server, nothing is going to happen. However, if I cancel one of those attempts, and I choose a host, so I've actually created a server for this guy to connect to, then they're both online. However, once I stop the host, the one on the left here is the host, then both go offline. Now, if we run this again, this little simulation, if I stop the client, nothing is going to happen to the host because the client is, uh, the, the host is not dependent on the client. Okay? Uh, now, you might be wondering how exactly is all of this working, and it's all working through the network manager. So if you go to our friend Google, and you just type in Unity 3D Network Manager API, then you'll see this top link here, and this gives you all of the information about the network manager. Uh, now, 
what a lot of people do is they create their own custom network managers. And that's because it gives them the ability to uh, override all of these callbacks. So on client error, on client not ready, on client scene changed, or on server scene changed, on server remove player, on server add player. Uh, all of these callbacks will provide you with information about what's going on with the state of your networked project. And it's all very useful to override. So what you might end up with is a script that actually uh, is a subset of network manager and overrides all of these uh, functions so that you know exactly what's going on. You can use debug log statements essentially to uh, stay up to date on what's happening with your, your server and your, and your clients. It also gives you uh, the methods for starting the client or starting the host, which were the buttons that we were pressing. And it gives you the ability to do a lot of things, really. And, and this is really a class that we're going to delve into deeply in this. Uh, regardless of what you guys choose you want to see, we'll be delving into this, this class to actually uh, make things happen and get the current state of the clients, the current state of the host and server. So it's, really, it's a really powerful class uh, that we will become very familiar with. Okay, so I know this is a pretty simple tutorial, but again, it's just scratching the surface and we are going to really uh, dig deep into the networker based on the project that you guys uh, want to see. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, I hope to hear from you guys in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.